Hi guys, so quick demonstration on how to fit the new Zenmoose ready FPV under tray. Uh, here it is here, uh, very similar to the normal under tray. Um, obviously we've got some slots that will allow to fit around the anti-vibration bracket. Um, the other addition is this little table, um, which I will get to in a moment. Um, prerequisites for doing all of this, um, obviously you're gonna need to buy your under tray. Um, we've also got the power filter. This is actually the three, uh, 2S and 3S power filter that comes with the Fat Sharp Predator V2 kit. Um, I've also got a housing for the 4S, the newer version, so you need to be careful when you buy um, which one because they don't fit in the same case. Um, optional, you can mount that separately if you want. This keeps things neat and it does work very well with this setup. Uh, you've obviously got your power, um, your uh, video transmitter, um, you've got your power cables. Um, we're also going to need uh, a couple of little bits of, I'm using just little bits of garden wire. This is to keep the door on. Uh, you can use screws, you can do threaded uh, threaded options. Um, and obviously you're all going to need the, uh, the Phantom. Um, and let's just bring the Phantom in so you can see how it's prepared. Okay, so first and foremost, I've not bothered with uh, the introduction on the uh, spacers. All these are, there's four spacers. They replace the innermost screws on the phantom legs. Um, these are 25 millimeter male to female brass hex spacers. And I'll take one out so you can see it. There you go. Two threads, M3 threads. They just replace the screw, screw in, and then basically the tray is going to sit on top of here and we're going to use the existing M3 screws that came with the Phantom to go into there. Okay, so the other things that I've done with this, obviously I've fitted my Zenmoose, I've got the cable coming out of one of the legs. Um, I've also created myself a little video cable um, so I can use the FPV, that's going into the, uh, the upgrade board. Um, and I've also got and auxiliary power supply. This will be plugged straight into the um, the power filter, basically. Leave yourself a decent amount of cable for that. You can always keep it tidy uh, using the cable tidy system. One note I would say is the upgrade board does not come with an auxiliary power um, uh, adapter um, like the original board did. Uh, if you do want this you're going to need to actually do some soldering, solder on a couple of cables to the actual ba battery power cable. Um, easy job when you fit, well if you can fit the upgrade board yourself you'll be able to do this. Um, if you're getting someone else to do it then I would request that they do that. Okay so first and foremost we're actually going to move the Phantom out of the way because we want to do a little bit of setup first with the tray. It's um, the, the way you do this is completely up to you. I find this the easiest way to manage it is to set a couple of things up first before we actually mount the tray. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to get our power filter and we want to take our power cable and we want to just feed the power cable through the back of the VTX holder. Okay, that will just make life a little bit easier when it comes to actually fitting. Uh, next what we want to do is we've got the uh, power filter, let's just plug that into the end here. There we go. Right, and then what I'm going to do is run this around this way around and basically using some velcro I'm going to slot the velcro through the velcro slot and we're actually going to mount the power filter through these slots hopefully you can see that around the back putting it nice and tight okay so power filter is going to fit there this is the ventilation hole for your uh, video transmitter. I'll just show you what that looks like when it's actually slotted in. Okay, so heat sink there, that gets very hot. That's why we don't cover that up. This is absolutely fine in the position that it's at. Okay, so next thing we want to do is actually to then fit this VTX in there now. 
and we'll do which one out there. So we're going to plug that in. Okay. Right. Now we're going to need the phantom. Now what you're going to want to do at this point, ideally, is take your video cable. This is to save a little bit of hassle once it's all on. And to, whilst this is still loose, we're going to want to feed this up through the back of the ETX tray. Okay, grab hold of the end of it and making sure we've got all of our cables the right way round. We're going to plug that in. Okay, right now we can feed this back inside. Excellent. So the power is actually going to go to the uh, to the power filter in a moment. I'm going to leave that for the time being. Right, and then it's just a simple case of fitting the uh, the tray on. All you do is you just slide it just above these uh, these um, uh, spheres to begin with. Wait until you get on the groove, and then you just sit it down. And as you should be able to see here, all of the holes align pretty much perfectly. Grab ourselves a screwdriver. Remembering not to use one with magnets and we simply thread that down I'll leave it loose for the moment, do the corners And the final one here. Okay, so that's everything mounted into place. Then all we've got to do, we take our door, slide it over the top, and this is where I use these little pieces of rigid cable. Slide that in there and hook that around. And get the next one, slide it in there, hook that around, and as you can see, that ain't going nowhere. So, metal that about, nice and rigid, I haven't done the screws up tightly just yet. And then of course finally what we would want to do is we want to plug the power cable, spin this around. into the power filter. That is obviously using the 3S slot. Um, I've just created this cable um, myself. Uh, you can actually run the, uh, the the battery directly to it via an extension cable if you want. This keeps things neat. Um, I haven't used the cable tidy system. I could have run this, for example, up through one of these slots. Standard header plug on this, so that could go through there, keep things a little bit neater. Easy as that, and that is the basic setup. There's a slight change in the way we set this up if we're going to be using this table. Um, what this table is, is it's designed to take a uh, secondary battery um, in the battery case. So if I just remove this. Show you very quickly one of my battery cages again available on my Shapeway shop that will fit there standard phantom battery fits inside this cage holds it nice and secure and then we velcro around it um, I'll do a separate video so you can just see how that all works um, 
this will obviously need to be rotated around so we don't get power problems bashing into uh, into there. But that's basically it. So um, as you can see, once you've got your uh, your GoPro in there, that will hold everything there. It gives you the option of having a second battery, um, and of course holding your uh, your fat shark well away from the body. So uh, hope you enjoy it.